Hi, Tor here from Pro Stock Tips. Now, as you would have noticed, Russia has attacked Ukraine, creating one of the largest humanitarian crises in modern history. So, um, essentially, Russia has invaded Ukraine to overthrow the existing government, claiming that they are Nazis and drug addicts. Um, well, I don't know much about their policies. However, you know, it looks like these leaders are actually pretty good. They're willing to fight to the death for their country. Um, their president uh, has been offered an extraction um, by the US. However, he's more like Rambo and uh, he's like, I need more ammo. <laughs> so I don't think he wants an extraction. He just wants more, more ammo. Um, basically, and obviously you can see here there's this um, this minister with the AK, um, so she's willing to fight uh, for her country. So you know there's some impressive leadership there. I'm not so positive on the um, instructions for civilians to to fight um, to defend their country. I think you know civilians should certainly, um, unless they're really passionate, um, you know, uh, should obviously evacuate. Uh, to safety. Um, that's what, uh, you know, I would think would be the most um, reasonable approach there. I wouldn't want to encourage my citizens to uh, die fighting for a, um, well, essentially a pointless war. Uh, this entire war is completely ridiculous. Um, and that's what most of the world thinks. However, you know, it's outrageous that the sanctions um, are so soft. We have very soft leaders here, uh, very soft world leaders, and they're not willing to do anything about it in the way of sanctions um, because of the harm that that would do to their own economies, which obviously is a reasonable consideration. However, you know, if they were really, really uh, uh, willing to stop this invasion um, and go all out on Russia in terms of sanctions, well, you would expect um, you know, crippling sanctions, right? Which would be targeting Russia's exports. Um, so an embargo in Russia, Russia, um, essentially complete ban of trade with Russia. So not, nothing goes in, nothing goes out. Um, obviously this would be devastating to European economies. Uh, however, you know, it would probably cripple Russia's economy um, and, you know, essentially aim to bankrupt Russia um, you know, and essentially they probably should have imposed those sanctions as soon as Russia crossed the border, essentially, um, you know, uh, and then said, well, if you want us to remove the sanctions back off, get out of the country. Um, now, the reason why I find it disappointing that the sanctions weren't implemented is because as a uh, mineral and resource investor, I would stand to benefit, um, you know, enormously. Um, from the corresponding commodity price increases, which would be uh, definitely perceivable if there was a complete um, export embargo on Russia, um, you know, provided that they couldn't get those minerals out through China somehow, um, who would probably be willing to offtake a lot of those minerals or already does. Uh, however, you know, that, that could certainly create, even create some lag. However, anyway, if the sanctions are if implemented, say um, this turns into even more chaotic scenario than it already is, then what we would be looking at is um, a, bunch, a range of commodities which have huge upside potential. So keep an eye out for the unlikely scenario that the sanctions are implemented because Russia is one of the largest producers of palladium. So they produce 40% of the world's palladium. So palladium prices could go from 2000 range to over $5,000 uh, per ounce, um, essentially because the deficit uh, would be enormous, 40% <laughs> of the world's uh, production. So obviously I will recommend some palladium stocks. Anglo-American, Sabaya Stillwater, Impala Platinum, and Zimplats are all existing palladium producers with high dividend yields. I think Zimplats is the riskier bet, but with much more upside potential. In terms of developers and explorers, you have Chellis Mining with the major Julema deposit, which is very likely to go into development if palladium prices stay strong. You also have Impact Minerals, 
as well as Platina, a major precious metals corp, which has assays pending. Russia is also a major producer of aluminium. So for me, I like Metro Mining, which I believe is in a breakout, and you can check out my video on Metro Mining. But South32 and Alcoa also seem to have strong momentum. Um, to keep an eye out, now nickel, uh, obviously they're producing 5 to uh, up to 14% of the world's nickel. So uh, recent figures were about 5%, I think. But obviously it depends on various different estimates. Um, you know, this is a significant volume of nickel and, you know, if they were, if we were to take 5% of the world's nickel production offline, or at least uh, from prevent it from entering the market, then we could see nickel uh, prices at 50K. Um, so nickel prices could double essentially on that deficit. And they could be heading that way anyway. Um, nickel's an interesting market with potential ramp ups from Indonesian suppliers. Um, however, you know, there is a lot of increased demand for class one nickel uh, used in lithium ion batteries. So nickel is an interesting commodity anyway. Um, now, it's also important to consider whether you want to invest in a developer or a produ existing producer. Obviously, there's usually more upside in the, in the developer if they're able to bring their mine online. Um, given that the commodity prices are now higher, they're able to achieve funding, finance, um, and bring their projects online, which is usually a very rewarding um, opportunity as a shareholder. Um, ex investing in one of the juniors or developers. Um, however, you know if if you're not expecting the uh, commodity prices to sustain their gains um, indefinitely, so you know sort of spike up and then crash back down um, when the embargo is lifted. So if you're thinking permanent sanctions that sort of thing, um, and permanent high prices, then you would certainly um, consider the developers. But if you think it's a short-term, uh, you know, market anomaly phenomenon, then you would go for a producer as they're going to take advantage of the uh, price hikes in real time, and you will see that uh, increased, um, you know, profit margin reflected in their earnings reports provided that the commodity sales are based on, um, you know, spot prices, tied to spot prices um, or something like that, as opposed to long-term contracts. So obviously you've got to be careful of where you invest your money, as always. IGO is my preferred nickel stock, and it is also expected to produce first lithium hydroxide in March. I think that IGO could find support at $10 and certainly rally back up to $13.35 in no time at all. And depending on lithium, nickel prices, as well as the market conditions, it could potentially even reach $20 this year. Chalice, as I mentioned before, is a promising developer. It also has the Palladium. So essentially, you could consider it an analogue of Nurilsk, which it would be aiming to replace. BHP is obviously a safest option, although with limited nickel exposure. And PNM is a high-risk developer, with early works commencing. Um, now, another thing is to consider about interest rates, this, uh, you know, whole shock to the global markets and economies uh, due to the Russian invasion um, could potentially delay rate hikes. Um, that's not for, sure, for certain, but the, it is creating a lot of uncertainty, um, you know, so the Fed might be more hesitant to increase rates, um, which could say, be very rewarding to... Um, the stock market, very beneficial to the stock market. I think that the market will respond well to delays or less aggressive uh, rate hike policies. That's for sure. Um, you know, although once I do also expect that once the Fed does start to increase rates, that um, you know, uh, the the stock market might sort of start to recover a bit as well after that. Um, essentially, because once you take the uncertainty out of it, uh, you know, or the after the event has occurred, then it sort of takes away the, the thing that's preventing the stock market from rising. Um, so you're allowing for, um, you know, the stock market to recover after the first rate hike has been announced. Um, so that's one of my forecasts. 
Uh, I would also say that I think that the stock market can recover um, now that the stock market has priced in the Russian invasion. Um, I think that they've already done that to a lot, large extent. You know, this is isolated to Russia and Ukraine and the main variables coming out about um, affecting the world economy <coughs> are probably already being priced in. You know, we're not, we're not talking about major disruptions to say the US market or the Australian market um, where I invest the majority of my funds. So I'm not particularly invested in the European market. Um, now, essentially, uh, so I do see a lot of upside to the stocks this year. So equity markets should perform quite well, I expect. Um, could be wrong about that. We could enter a bear market, but I'm hoping for a return to at least stable or bullish market conditions. Um, you know, now that all the bad news uh, has sort of already been delivered and um, digested by the markets. Uh, back to commodities. So they also produce some copper. Um, so perhaps 3% of the world's copper. Um, wheat, Ukraine, both Russia and Ukraine produce wheat. So keep an eye on wheat prices. I like to track uh, prices of commodities on trading economics, um, as you know. So certainly there could be upside for grain corp. I haven't certainly decided on what um, grain producers I might consider investing in. Uh, I haven't invested any money in grain producers at the moment. But you know, certainly keep an eye out for disruptions to the grain market. Um, now titanium, so obviously the titanium, uh, Russia's a large producer of titanium. So uh, that's something to consider anyway, especially if you're a Boeing or Airbus investor, you know, if there is disruption to titanium, that could be bad for your stocks. Um, so keep an eye on that. As for producers, um, you know, you could certainly search for a few producers um, or, you know, uh, there's an interesting developer called Iperion X, which uh, has some um, MOUs for offtake for mineral sands and is looking at um, becoming a titanium metal producer. So that's quite interesting. Also ASM as well. Um, so there's certainly some potential for titanium metal producers out there. Uh, which could benefit greatly if we were to see sustained um, penalties on um, Russian titanium exports, for example. Uh, also, another really interesting one is fertilizers. So, I mean, um, Belarus, which is an ally of Russia and is one of the regions that Russia is attacking Ukraine from, um, is a key producer of uh, <clears throat> sorry, is a key producer of potash. So there's certainly some interesting potash stocks that I would like to talk about because potash prices are already high and um, Belaruski has declared a force majeure um, so they can't supply their potash contract. So this is really significant stuff. Um, we could see sustained, um, sustained potash price rises and there's certainly some very um, undervalued potash stocks to consider or potentially undervalued um, that are in production or nearing production. Uh, okay, I'll cover them later. Um, also, uh, urea production. So Russia is a large producer of urea so and ammonia. So that's quite significant. Um, I've already covered LCK in a previous video, which is planning to become a major um, urea producer. Um, within the next few years. So if urea prices sustain their current highs or even go higher even, uh, we could certainly see enormous, enormous upside with those, okay? Over 20 times return on investment, potentially. Um, their project's already looking very, very favorable in my, con uh, my consideration um, with significant de-risking already taking place or has occurred. So LCK looks like a good stock. I'll cover that a bit later. And um, oil and gas uh, and coal. So obviously coal, um, thermal coal is quite a significant export from Russia. And, um, you know, I've already covered Terracom as my key coal stock. And I believe that Terracom is already in a breakout with phenomenal earnings at the moment. So um, these earnings are truly exceptional at the moment with the current prices. 
So certainly Terracom looks very promising. Um, now, uh, obviously oil and gas, that's an interesting one. So interestingly, uh, the UK has a lot of gas that it could potentially, um, you know, produce itself if it was to uh, allow fracking. But interestingly, the UK government um, has banned fracking or has a moratorium on it, um, which seems completely ridiculous because they, they have basically placed this ban on fracking due to um, some earthquakes uh, that aren't, they weren't even really earthquakes, they were seismic events, minor vibrations in the earth. Um, obviously, fracking won't result in a real or highly destructive earthquake, um, you know, for any, uh, from any significant distance from the actual fracking site, um, simply because of the physics or geophysics basically. So I think that those claims of um, seismicity um, for the moratorium are quite absurd and that um, certainly UK should at least consider these fracking options and allow them to see how much gas they can actually produce. Um, so that would be very interesting. Uh, however, I don't expect them that the UK will reduce the ban um, under its current leadership because most of the public's opposed to fracking due to uh, environmental um, disasters that have been associated with fracking in other countries, um, essentially, so fracking has a bad name, even though that all depends where you're fracking and what controls you have in place, so it's completely ridiculous, in my opinion. Um, however, you know, if we do see, um, you know, obviously Russia is a large producer of gas and oil, um, so if we were to cut those off, obviously we're going to have to, um, obviously Europe is going to have to find a new source. So we'll see droves of LNG tankers from, you know, countries like Australia, the Middle East, Qatar, Qatar, um, and uh, the USA. Some reshuffle of the global LNG trade. Um, they certainly won't be able to get enough uh, gas to Europe to cover uh, Russia, Russia's um, exit from the market, I guess, with um, sanctions, if that was to take place. Um, they won't have enough gas, so that's not ideal. Um, anyway, gas prices go through the roof, and countries like Australia and the US and certain stocks, you know, Chevron, Shell, um, you know, and many others are going to benefit enormously. Same with oil, um, you know, oil, oil prices could skyrocket up to $140 per barrel if um, Russian exports were banned. So, uh, you know, there certainly could be some potential in oil stocks. Uh, you know, I've already talked about a few oil stocks that I like, uh, like Oxy and, um, uh, yeah, some, some others there. So, like Archer Daniel Gidlands is an interesting um, biofuel stock. Uh, now, however, there's also plenty of others, so I'll probably cover those later in the video. Um, thanks for watching, guys, um, and I'll let you know if I think of any other interesting commodities um, to talk about with the Russian sanctions and how that unfolds.